Hi everyone, this is Ellie May with Silhouette Secrets Plus and Swift Creek Customs. Today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to do print and cut through Silhouette Studio to give you the best results for a process of getting the project cut accurately. Um, I do have some tips on using defaults and using a print bleed that will help. In this tutorial, I am working with a product that is a new product by Caesar. It is called Easy Color DTV, and I'm going to show you how I set up the process to do the print and cut to create the shirt that I am wearing today. So through the process, I'll give you some tips. I'm also going to throw up links in the description below for more tips on both print and cut and working with the Easy Color DTV. If you'd like to be notified of more Silhouette tutorials, please make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, so I'm going to start on a new page here and get it set up. I have a Cameo 4, I'm going to set it to letter, and I do like to turn on the show print border and the show cut border. The print border is the gray line and the show cut border is the red line. So once I turn my registration marks on, you're going to see the red cut line moves in on my registration marks that I'm showing there. The cross-hatched area is a very important area. You need to keep your design away from the cross-hatched area. Click on the restore defaults, and that's going to be your best option and your most accurate read for a print and cut. Anything in the cross-hatched area can interfere with that optical eye reading. So then I'm just grabbing this design from my library, double clicking, and it comes into my design mat. So now I'm going to rotate the design. While you can print in landscape orientation, I have found over the years that I get the best results with a portrait orientation for print and cut. Something about the way that it reads, it just seems to give better luck. And then I use the corner bounding box to increase the size. Now here I did use the center to page. You can see that the design goes into the cross hatched area. So I moved that out again and then manually change that. Now, typically I keep my designs between nine and 10 inches wide on shirts for myself. It's just a personal preference that I like the design front and center. I will post a link in the description below on some tips on sizing for designs. And then I'm gonna save the file. So I always wanna save it and you wanna make sure that after you have your design printed that you do not move anything on the page. Otherwise you're not gonna get an accurate cut. And then I'm gonna to go to file print and you can check here for your registration marks. It's always a good idea to double check. I can go into the print and I like to choose my printer, go to the preferences or advanced settings. I choose preview before printing just so I can catch anything um, that might be an error. And then I'm gonna choose the plain paper and high quality setting for this easy color DTV. Click okay, and then I'm gonna choose print. And then what you're gonna see is that a print preview for my printer shows up. And this is where I can check finally that all of the registration marks are going to print before I waste any of my ink or my more expensive materials. And then I'm gonna choose start printing. Now, the data in the file and your printer setup all affect how long it takes to spool. You'll see here I was low on yellow ink, so I actually stopped the print and I changed my ink before I did this print. Now, a couple things to note here is the amount of time it takes to send your design to your printer or print the actual print can be affected by several things. The spooling time, or if you have a wireless printer, you have to connect into your network, so connect into your router from your computer to the router to the printer. And so it depends on where all of these devices are located and it can take time. I have sped up this video, so it's a little bit faster. But the other option or the other thing that affects it is your print quality. And so the higher your settings, the longer it takes to print as well because it's printing at a slower rate of speed. Now I've taken that print and I'm going to place it in the top left corner of my cutting mat exactly how it shows on the silhouette screen. So you want it to cover your grid lines and you want it to be as straight as possible. Remember that the Silhouette machine is just a laser eye. It is just looking for those registration marks in the exact same location as you have set up on your Silhouette Studio software. This is why third-party cutting mats can affect your results or if your printer did not print it correctly. 
So you're going to load it next to the line on the left and you want your rollers on each edge of your cutting mat. If your rollers are on the adhesive, it can affect how it feeds into the machine. And then I go back into the Silhouette software so I can go to the Send tab and I'm going to then set up my material. And I will put a link into the description about how you can do custom settings, but I have set up a custom setting here. And you're going to notice, and I left this in the video, I am choosing my USB connection. I find that um, even though I'm using my machine on Bluetooth, which I've done for several years, it usually picks up the connection faster if I switch it to USB, even without it plugged in, and then I switch back to the Bluetooth. Now, I know a lot of users have the same issue, so I left this in the video at real time. I got impatient. It wasn't connecting as fast as it typically does. There are a lot of things that can affect that, devices in your, in your room, all kinds of things. So it finally picked up and it was syncing. And once it is picked up and checks for that firmware, then it will show those cut settings. But it won't show unless your machine is recognized. Then I'm gonna click on the send button. And it's gonna go over, it's gonna start to register. So I'm going to hold my mat completely flat and level as it goes to register. And in this first one, you can see that my registration, I had an error. I don't know what happened. I don't know, it picked up the top of my mat and it didn't register properly. I unload my cutting mat and then I reload my cutting mat go back to my software and click the X to cancel the job, wait for the send button to come back up, and then I'm gonna hit send again. Gonna hold that mat completely level as or a little up as I do it, and this time it registered perfectly. So I don't know what it was, but I know users have that same issue, so I left it in the video. Um, once in a while, I rarely ever have an issue. And then of course, when I'm on camera, there goes the issue. But you can see that this reads those registration marks in a very specific way. Now I have sped up this video and with the time lapse, so you don't have to watch the entire thing cut over several minutes. So while it's cutting, many factors affect your print and cut. I will say that in advance, you're going to see here that I did not use a print bleed and it makes a difference. So when we get down to the weeding part of this, you're going to see I have a white edge and I show that very specifically. The Silhouette machine has an allowance of 1 16th inch for print and cut that is in a normal range of being off the cut. So you need to take that into account. It is not 100% accurate that 1 16th inch is within its normal range. Factors that you can do to help that and get the best cut are to use the default registration marks, to hold your mat level, to use a silhouette cutting mat, um, make sure that your printer is printing correctly onto your materials. You can see that white edge around everywhere here. And so I actually have done two prints and we're gonna go into the next one here in just a second. But I want you to see this. So especially with this Caesar Easy Color DTV, I don't want that white edge. And I know a lot of people when they're doing stickers and things like that, they don't want that white edge. So using a print bleed or accounting for that in some way um, is going to be very helpful. So I sped this up so you didn't have to watch me weed every single little piece. And I still kept this print, so I have it as a demonstration. But now if you were putting it on a white shirt, you're really not gonna notice this with this easy color um, DTV. But if you're putting it on a darker shirt, you definitely will notice that white edge. So there are ways that we can fix that in the Silhouette Studio software. And I wanted to share with you because I actually just forgot to turn on the print bleed. And so then I did a second print and I went into the print bleed. And I do have to let you know that print bleed is currently broken in the V4.4.9XX series. And so I'm using V4.4.552, the 0 .050 um, print bleed was way too much, so I canceled it, and I'm decreasing it again. And this is another reason I like that print preview, is that I can check this 
it actually shows up in this version of 4.4.552 and 0.554 it shows on the screen so I can make sure that it's going to print older versions it did not show in the print preview um, and in the newer versions like I said it's currently broken it's a bug and they are aware of that so now I'm going to go back to the print since I've changed it to 0 0.15 0 0.015 you can see that it's not overlapping my letters, which is great. The middle, it's not so much an issue because I'm gonna be cutting that out and it's gonna show as white. So now I'm gonna go ahead and print because I've already got all my settings set up from the first print. And you're gonna see that it's taking time to spool that data and that information to my printer. So it takes the data, this brings up the next print preview the data of your file can affect how long it takes to spool that print job. More graphics equals more data. And then I did the print. You're going to see it pop up here. And I didn't even bother to show the um, printing process. I just put it on the mat. I'm going to reload my cutting mat the same way with the left edge next to the line on the left, holding my mat level. it's going to start to register. And it is a very specific movement in every registration mark that it reads. So if you watch your machine carefully, you can pick up how it's reading. So it reads that black square a little bit differently than it reads the, red, uh, the brackets on there. And the size of those brackets, while you can go in and change the settings to make them smaller, you are increasing the chance of an inaccurate cut because it makes it harder for that optical eye to find those marks. The same thing is true if you are putting your design close to those cross hatched areas, or in some cases, a very dark design, black or dark blue or really dark colors, even anywhere near that cross hatched area can interfere because that optical eye just picks up the color you can see here I'm showing that print bleed. So I no longer have those white edges around my design. Now another way you can do print bleed if it's not working in your software is to create a small offset around your design and fill that with color. And I'll throw a link up in the description below on the offset feature. And I had a few camera issues here. My camera actually fell over right after this print bleed that I'm showing you. So I don't have the final weeding part of it. So here is the finished project with the Easy Color DTV on the shirt. I am going to throw a link up in the description below that goes through the masking and the pressing part of this that's on my Swift Creek Customs channel. Uh, I hope these tips give you success in your print and cut no matter what material you are using. I always recommend if you're having issues or you're a beginner to start at the defaults. Make sure that you can get an accurate cut with those defaults. And I'll also throw up some links in the description below on more resources for print and cut and for getting a good print and cut. If you like to be notified for future Silhouette Studio tutorials, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.